Hi everyone, my name is Martin and welcome to another great edition of MP Astro. Now, has anyone come across this problem where prices are going up all the time, you save up your hard earned cash, uh, you want to save uh, the accessories you want, but because prices are going up all the time, it seems to be you're being pushed back constantly all the time. So every time you've had to save to get what you wanted, the prices go up. So I've come across this and I'm struggling as well because in the, the day with this hobby, a lot of the equipment that you want to buy are very expensive. And like there's even even the budget equipment is also getting very expensive. So I've come across this problem and it is very frustrating. I have inch and a quarter filters. These I have is a Barda Solar Continuum filter, which is a solar filter. And I've got like a Planet Killer filter. I've also got another filter which has, um, which is the, um, like a deep sky Lumicon filter, all are inch and a quarter filters. Now the good thing about inch and a quarter filters, they are way cheaper than these filters. These are two inch format filters. These are very expensive. I have the Optolong L Pro and L Ance filters. Fantastic filters for astrophotography. They can help for visual, but personally, these are more suited for astrophotography purposes. They, they uh, pass through a certain light wave to narrow band, one does broadband, the other is narrow band, and they allow a certain light to pass through the spec a light spectrum. Now, these are specialized filters these combat against light pollution and different types of sky, all right? And they do a different effect on capturing nebula and galaxy detail. Broadband is a lot less abrasive than narrowband. Narrowband tends to uh, soak in a lot of the hydrogen alpha regions of nebula, while the broadband tends to do a wider spectrum of light to pass through but blocks, blocks out a lot of the light pollution but allows a lot of the detail to be seen through galaxies. All right. This is a really good filter, the L Pro. The L Ants is more suited for nebula type objects while the L Pro is suited for a wider range of objects. But however, these are not cheap. These are like literally 160 to about 200 pounds for a two inch format filter. They are not that cheap indeed. Now I've come across this dilemma and I have, I've got loads of inch and a quarter filters that I want to use, but I find that very frustrating that I can't use them because I should have gone for the two inch format filters. However, all is not lost. Like always, I've been looking around and finding a possible solution. If you try to use these filters with a DSLR camera, you've got no chance. The only option is a minimum of a two inch format filter. So I've been looking around on the internet and I found some possible solutions. So please, if you like watching my video, please hit a like button. And again, please subscribe onto my channel. Also share this video out. By sharing this video out might actually help someone else who is in the same situation as I am, trying to save my hard earned cash. Prices are pumping up. I can't afford the two inch filter eyepieces because they're a bit on the ex expensive side. The only reason I got these is what I got these two years ago. These filters were way cheaper back then. Now they are hideous. They're in the 200s. 300 pound for a glass filter with coat special coatings on them really is expensive and the only solution is look at the inch and a quarter format filters which are 
They are still expensive, but a lot cheaper. So with these solutions here, please share that video out. It may help people who is also in the same situation as I am. And also don't forget to hit the bell by hitting that bell will keep you notified for any videos I push out. And a lot of the videos I'm going to try and focus on is on the budget aspects because where things are going nowadays, people are struggling. People are struggling even to look up at the stars because of the prices. And I don't blame you guys and girls. We're in that same boat, same situation. So if you want to find out more what I found out on these possible solutions, please keep watching and let's do this. So then guys and girls, what I'm going to show you is these. Now these are special adapters, all right? And these are to fit inch and a quarter filters. Now what we have is a product called Prod 12033, and this is an adapter 1040, right? This is an adapter for an inch and a quarter to fit an M48 thread. And the other one is, this is a zoo type adapter. This is a T2 inch and a quarter filter adapter to fit T2 threads. So these cost between 12 to about 16 pounds. Now, yes, you do need to spend a bit of money on these. However, all becomes apparent when I go later in the video. Now, as you can see, these adapters will enable me to fit some of my inch and a quarter filters. And I've got some really good filters right here. You know, some that are, I've got like an IR, I've got a Zoo IR 850 filter here, all right? I've got an Outer Astro filter, which is a CLS filter, all right? I've got the awesome Barda Continuum filter, which is in this box, which is here, all right? And I've got a really good, and this is an awesome filter, very old school filter in the early 90s was a Lumicon Deep Sky filter. Again, some of these you can get in two inch format, but they're very rare, but you find these in inch and a quarter all the time. And it's such a damn good filter that. But I've got loads of these awesome inch and a quarter filters and I don't hardly use them, particular when you're using a DSLR camera or a CCD camera. Certain inch and a quarter filters do not fit because they're too small for the camera sensor. So that's the problem with these filters is that if you're using larger format sensor sizes for your cameras, these filters are not adequate. All right, when you've got small chip sensors, that's fine, like a Zoo ISI 120 camera, anything, you know, as at a push, probably one, one eighth of a camera sensor is probably the maximum you can use. But again, uh, you need to check out the CC, you need to check out the CCD filter suitability app from Astronomy Tools to find out, and I'll show you. So then guys and girls, I'm going to show you this useful app from Astronomy Tools. So what we're gonna do is, there's the Astronomy Tools webpage, and as you can see, there's a variety of apps you can highlight. But the one we're most interested, if we go and locate at calculators, and you go to CC filter size. So what we've got here is a list of tables uh, of information we need to put input. So for example, if I want to use the filter, I have to select the type of telescope I'm going to use. So for that instance, I'm going to use the Alta Astro Lightwave 66ED, which is this telescope that I'm going to use. It's already figured out the focal length and aperture. 
you can actually just select custom and you can manually input the data if you know it on your telescope. It will then ask if you're going to use a Barlow or reducer but for this instance we're not going to use any of that. Okay, I'm not going to use any Barlow or reducer. So the filter size, all right, the filter to CCD. Now, where the way I work this out is very crucial. Before you can do anything, you need to pick out the camera first. So for me, I'm going to use my Canon 600D. It will already have the CCD sensor calculated for that. Now the filter to CCD distance is where I work this out is the back focus on the Canon 600D for example has at the edge of the camera body to the marking sign on the camera body there is like a like a small satin symbol that satin symbol is the back focus of exactly where that sensor is so I already know the back focus of that camera is 44 millimeters I then add 11 millimeter thick on the DSLR ring if you're using the thinner type it's one millimeter thick so it depends on which T ring you use some are 11 millimeter and some are literally one millimeter thick of extra distance so what I usually do is I put 44 that's the from the edge of the camera body to the symbol most DSLR cameras are usually especially if they've got the flip mirror they usually are round about 45 with mirrorless cameras like the Sony 6400 for example uh, the sensor will be a lot closer so we're talking like probably 10 15 millimeters closer so you just got to be careful this part is very crucial so 44 and say like I'm going to use uh, a standard T-ring so I add 44, add 11, will be 45, 55. Already with just the T-ring and the main camera body to the sensor is 55 millimeter. This is the point where you look at. Now the recommended filter size is 32.13. So that is the minimum size of that filter. So the easiest way is to measure the diameter, the inside diameter of your filter using a, a vernier caliper to determine the clear aperture of that filter you're going to use. Now with the spacer, we want to put the spacer behind the T-ring and we're going to try and have the filter sort of facing towards the flip mirror. So what I usually do is I usually take off, I usually what I do is if I add 44 and we want it behind the T-ring so what I tend to do is just add three, just add three mil, so it'll give me 47. Then it gives you the recommended filter size. So the closer you can get to that filter towards the flip mirror, the better. Um, you the, the best the best chance you're gonna have the filter to work so the closer that filter is towards the sensor the less the vignetting effect will occur so as you can see there 
recommended filter size is 31.34 so it's very tight so if I'm using the one millimeter uh, with the, um, the, the if I'm using the one millimeter t-ring that will just add 45 straight away got 31.15 all right this is the diameter of that filter so use this calculator to work out that distance again different camera sizes you are bigger the sensor bigger the filter with bigger the filter needs to be smaller the sensor you can get away with inch and a quarter but if I do my homework and if I get that if I get the adapter to work I want the filters to be literally around about 40 millimeters close to the sensor so as you can see with that astronomy tools app you can see that you can you can see that certain of these filter sizes those inch and a quarter filters can actually affect a Canon DSLR camera but again you must check uh, that astronomy tools app to confirm this now as you can see here I've got me Alto Astro 66 refractor I've got my DSLR camera here and I've got my flip mirror system the T rings connected up now at the moment this is my one of my solar setups that I use for hydrogen alpha or white light solar solar work uh, to either observe or image the sun now as you can see here if we take off the camera you can see that if we flip the mirror you can see that the sensor is way big look at the size of that and this is where some of these filters are you're literally pushing it okay and as you can see here these filters are literally on the limit of this camera sensor. Now the se camera sensor is a large sensor, it, even though it's half crop. Now these filters do not work with full frame cameras, only half crop sensors. As we checked it out on the calculator, we can get away with using these filters. So to make sure you've got the right adapter before you buy, buy them, there are two different types of T-rings. Now, again, both T-rings fit a Canon EOS camera. Now, the, this is to fit my 600D. Now, there are two different sizes. You've got one, which is an M42 thread, also known as a T2 thread. All right? This is probably one of the basic types of camera adaption you can buy or the cheapest forms you can buy. The other one is a little bit more expensive, but this is an M48 thread. Again, this is a much larger aperture to reduce vignetting. Now, obviously, both fit my camera, both exactly the same. And this is where you need to check your this is so this is where you need to check your camera tearing and to do this if you've got a t-ring you can measure it up and confirm using the vernier calipers and it gives you sort of a rough sort of measurement you'll be slightly out but at the moment i've got 41 millimeters on there all right on the m42 so yes it's 41 millimeters diameter but it literally is 42 the other one will be probably 47 because of the thread if we measure it up with vernier calipers again i have got yes 47 there okay so straight away 41 47 straight away that's an m42 that is an m48 so that's how you can determine uh, the sizes of your, D, of your DSLR T-rings. Then you can order the ones and then as you can see there there are different diameters. So we're going to start off with the M42 thread and we're going to start off 
with this adapter for the T2. Now the T2 fits directly inside the T-ring. Okay, so you thread it inside like so. Like so. You can either thread it like that, or you can do this. If you grab yourself the barter filter, for example, you can screw on the filter like that, okay? And then you can then screw on, you, it doesn't really matter where you want to screw it, you can screw it this way, like so, or you can screw it the other way, from the inside. Okay, so so you can screw it this way. Okay, now the one thing you do need to highlight, I do need to highlight, is that if you screw it in this way, yes you do get the closest point towards the camera sensor, okay? But the main problem is you've got to make sure that you've got to check before you fit it, okay? So if you're, say like for example, if you're too close, you might not be able to fit the camera onto the sensor. So for example, See, on this camera, if we flip the mirror, you have the mirror colliding onto the filter, all right? So if you flip the mirror back, what you'll probably find that if you try to screw the camera, like so, yes, this one fits, okay? So this filter fits even though it's threaded all the way down, but certain filters don't necessarily work like that, okay? So, I'm just going to give you a good example of one filter that I have. And uh, this one's quite a large, thick piece filter. As you can see there, it's quite large. Now, with this, what I found out with the Canon 600Ds is if you measure it up with vernier calipers, you measure the filter first. Now, this filter is 9 millimeters thick, okay? Nine millimeters thick, this filter. And the main problem with this filter is, yes, you can screw it all the way in, like so, and then you put your T-ring, like so, all right? And then, once you fit it in there, you'll probably find, I mean, luckily that fits, but, what you've got to be careful is if you're using a thinner T-ring like this one. See this thinner one, if you use the thinner one, you only got a, a, not much room to play about with. So as you can see here, so, and bear in mind, you've got to have the gap of your nose piece in there to connect to the telescope and the problem is though you've got to have at least a few threads remaining on there so if we take a closer look so as you can see here you've got to have a few remaining threads just to put the nose piece in all right because if you screw it all the way in this is what i'll show you now If you screw it all the way in, okay, so you've got a little bit of thread there. We're now going to put the filter adapter in there, like so. Okay, so now we're using a thinner T-ring. Now this gives me a play of one mil, right, and I'm going to show you that if you connect the camera on there, you can see straight away that it does not fit, it doesn't actually fit on there. 
and don't force it in because if you force it in you're going to damage the uh, the flip mirror also you can't just flip the mirror on the camera up and then fit it because what what do is this this mirror will collide onto the um, filter all right and that's what you don't want now you can if you do your homework right try and get away of using smaller thinner filters and the ones I found out that are more suitable is get filters that are for example like this good alto astral one this one is five mil thick all right five mil thick the border one is quite thick but again if we measure it up we've got about six mil now one thing i found out between five mil and seven mil thick filters will be ideally suited for this setup okay so when you do fit this on there okay you can now screw on your thin t-ring like so and then you can providing the mirror flip mirror is down you can then screw on now as you can see there so as you can see there, I tried to fit it on, and even though I'm using a slightly bigger filter, the thing you've got to be careful of is if it does not go in, all right, and you can't clip it in, it means you can't fit it. So one thing, the top tip that I would suggest to you guys and girls is slacken the nose piece slightly to about one or two threads, and then screw it in until you've got a bit of a one mil lip across there okay you have to play about with it once you get it in there you then line it up and hopefully fingers crossed it fits and there we go as i can see there we've got the mirror yeah quite close but it's not colliding onto the filter and to test it is like always I'm going to take the risk and show you guys and girls that's the mirror up that's the mirror down that's the mirror up that's the mirror down so as you can see you've got to play about with these adapters you can't just throw it in there and then willy-nilly just put the adapter you've got to play about with these adapters now the bigger the adapters the more of an air gap you'll get okay with these thinner t-ring pieces you just got to be careful with these t-rings because you don't have much of a gap now this is probably the limit if you're using anything beyond this six mil it doesn't work plus you can't just keep slacking off the nose piece if you take it off by a lot more threads all you're doing is is making this unstable so a good three or four a good four to five of threads is okay but anything less than that is not adequate so again you've got to play about with these filters again check the sizes the thickness of your filters as well but the thing is you can't just put a nose piece like that to then try and fit the filter the other way now I have tried this alright and this is what you get if you try to fit the filter that way you can make it flush this way okay but the main problem though if you're using an inch and a quarter nose piece you can't fit it because this filter, depending on the design, can be in the way. 
Now, this one's got a sunk in indentation, which allows you to do that. But some inch and a quarter nose pieces don't have that flange part. But certain nose pieces like this one can allow you to do that. So you can screw it in that way. But the main problem with that is, even with the flange, depending on the size of filter, you can tell it's not adequate. It's not screwed in properly, as you can see there. So that's a problem. Certain filters may go, some won't. But again, these adapters cost very little money. All right. So what I found is the best solution is to mount the filter on the other way. But again, you've got to play about with these adapters. They don't work straight away, all right? So with the bigger ones, you're okay because you've got loads of travel, a thread travel here. So even with this T2 here, you've got loads of thread in there. So you can put your thread there like so. There you go. That's fully flush and that's also clear from the camera and again you can fit this directly on there not a problem so you fit it on there All right so check the camera on off on off so there you go smaller t-rings you just got to be careful so the adaptions will work for the smaller t-rings for the bigger t-rings you shouldn't have a problem but again Please check the filter thickness because all inch and a quarter filters have different size sizes. So you must check that. So as you can see, we've got the M48 thread. All right, and we're going to screw it in into the M48 T-ring. And like I say, it fits in perfectly. And I can fit my inch and a quarter filter either way with this one. Now, so yeah, you've got to be careful which filters, you, uh, which T-rings you use because not all T-rings fit the same. As you can see there, even though it's got a wide field opening here, okay, and you can safely have the filter screwed on this way. If you fit the two inch format, you can tell straight away the, it's on one mil of thread and that's not secure at all. So you've got to be careful with these adaptions. All right, these are not 100% guaranteed. All right, you've got to really check up on your T ring. All right, T ring to check this. Unfortunately, it's not one of these things that I can just tell you straight away that it's this T ring. As you can see, you just got to check your T-ring. Again, it is hit and miss when using these adapters. And I'll be honest with you guys and girls, I'd rather highlight uh, the truth, point it out that not all T-rings work perfectly. So please, what I would recommend is go for the T2 adaption because they seem, it seems to fit okay. These M48 threads are okay. Uh, the adapter works perfectly, but not all T adapters work the same. Okay, and as you can see there, this only screws on to like literally a thread, and that's not ideal. So I don't have an M48 T ring to show you, but there are some, um, like this one I've got, now I've got a, a Sony one where they have a T ring and an M48 ring here. Now as you can see I badly scored it because this is really tight. But as you can see here there is an, a separate insert where you can take this off all right, and to reveal an M48 thread. But again this depends on uh, the design of the T ring. Now. Um, it really does. So the M48 adapter, to be honest with you guys and girls, is sort of hit and miss with this one because it the thread, the, the adapter itself 
is rather rather large quite thick because there's quite a few threads there but it does fit but again you've got to check your t-ring carefully with this type of adapter so the m48 is all right but it's sort of hit and miss it really is even though it offers the wider aperture which you can allow the filter to screw in that way and you can screw on your nose piece quite comfortably but again it really does depend all right so the m48 to my personal recommendation is sort of hit and miss so with this one you can fit the filter all right the other way if you want to be safe all right screw it the other way like so so you have it flush at the back like that and uh, you can use like a, this is a camera adaption and this will fit on there like so and as you can see there the filter fits snugly inside this one all right and there's no chance of that filter colliding into the flip mirror so there are different ways and means so with this with this setup what I've got my 66 I'm going to take off the flip mirror to make it easy all right now I've got a nice little setup I've got a two inch fil filter for my energy reduction filter now with this flip mirror system it has a t2 thread here like so and what we're going to do is we're going to adapt the we're going to put the t2 adapter so grab a t2 adapter like so you're going to get my solar continuum filter inch and a quarter top tip when you put in a new filter make sure you clean it and make sure it's free from dust so what I do is I'll give it a good blowout using a blow brush okay just to get all the fragments of dust from there all right like so and if there's any dirt marks or something like that you can get yourself some barter wonder fluid and cloth and just clean it up that way you get your filter you then screw on on there nice and flush like so then we grab our t-ring so this is my t2 t-ring for this setup and i'm going to have my filter aiming this way so i'm just going to screw it in there now this is quite a large thick t-ring so i can screw it all the way in like so I need to at least give myself a good three to five threads well at the most the more threads the better okay so with this I grab my t-ring like so and then I screw it at the bottom of my flip mirror system until it goes flush so now the filter adaption is in there I just make sure I just quickly just screw back any of the remaining thread like so you don't need to over tighten it you just nip it up like so so that is the filter in place we can then connect our camera and again check see if it clips in first if you can't then you might need to adjust it but this one clips in perfectly as you can see we check it see if it flips up and down and as you can see it's clear so that is the camera set up in place and then I can attach attach the whole setup together like so and there you go okay and that is my flip mirror system on there with me inch and a quarter 
filter in place. So as you can see, we've got the ST80 pointing at a tower. And as you can see there, it's focused the image. Now this is the method I use because the, sh the focus tube is, is all the way out, but not fully extended. And as you can see there, I'm using the two T extension tubes. So this is around about 30 millimeters. Ideally you want something like 40 to 45, uh, but it will achieve focus this way. And as you can see there, we're focused on there using the cheaper T ring here, which I've got. Now, if I loosen it, I can show you that it's definitely, I'm definitely using a filter. See if I slacken it off. There is the filter in place and uh, this fits perfectly. So as you can see there, the adapter for the T2 adaption works perfectly. And if we up the exposure, okay, we're just gonna whitewash it out like so. We've got no vignetting whatsoever. So, um, so what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll take a shot just to prove to you guys and girls. So if I just did two or three seconds, at ISO whatever. Okay. And as you can see, there we go. We've got no vignetting whatsoever. Okay, I've got no, you know, I've got, it's taking no picture, but it's taking a picture and I've got no vignetting whatsoever. So it just shows you guys and girls that um, inch and a quarter filters do work with a Canon DSLR like this. This only works for half crop sensors, but again, be careful with certain half crop sensors. Please use the CCD filter suitability app that's on astronomy tools to confirm this. But I know that inch and a quarter filters do work with the Canon 600D. It will work with the 450D, the 500D, and I believe the 700 to 750D, they will work on those cameras as well. All right, so the smaller the size sensor, the better the chance the inch and a quarter filter. Now, believe it or not, the Sony, the Sony A thousand, uh, the Sony, believe it or not, the Sony six thousand four hundred camera that I have, the inch and a quarter filters do not work with that camera because yes, it's a half crop sensor, but the sensor is massively bigger. And I do get vignetting through that camera, okay? And it doesn't it doesn't work very well. And I'll show you guys and girls this effect. So here we are. We've got the Sony 6400 using the T2 adaption. That way, we had to increase the focus tube a bit more on this one. But as you can see here, if we take a closer look, we have got the camera. And you can just see a hint of vignetting around the side. So as you minimize the exposure, you can see, you can see this vignetting. It's only mild vignetting, but you can just see it around the edge of the corners, which means that the filter is too small for this sensor. All right. So there is a mild vignetting around the side, but it's not bad to see We've uh, managed to use an inch and a quarter filter for even a bigger, larger sensor. And this is much bigger. This is a slightly bigger half crop sensor, but it still works quite well. And because it's a mirrorless camera, it does work quite well. It's just that you're just gonna get mild vignetting. This is the limit on what you can do with inch and a quarter filters. 
this I can probably get away with just imaging I could just image with that not a problem but as you can see it's uh, it's only when you dim it you can see the vignette in effect it's only slight but it's not bad but apart from that everything else is pretty good so really I could image with that not a problem but personally um, I prefer to use the Canon 600D uh, the the inch and a quarter filters fit perfectly and like always to prove to you guys and girls that this does work I'm just going to take off the camera so just going to take off the camera like so and there you go there is the filter, like always, it works for this sensor, but the sensor you can see is much larger. It's a much larger sensor, and the camera, you know, the inch and a quarter just barely fits on the Sony. But it just proves to you guys and girls that you can use inch and a quarter. you just got to use that calculator online to determine if you can use inch and a quarter filters but again several factors also highlight is not all inch and a quarter filters this one has a clear aperture of 27 millimeters so providing you know the, the dimensions of your filters you should be good to go this one's a relatively good one because it's got a clear aperture of 27 which is pretty good some filters don't even have that so that's something you need to, con to, to consider as well because again not all f inch and quarter filters are the same So let's find out. So we've got the target, the sun, and as you can see, we've got it nice perfectly on the sensor and we're focused through our telescope. Now what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm going to do a recording as well. So do a video recording, because I always do video recordings, I never do pictures. Video recordings are good because when you stack the image, plus you get a cropped image like that. I've got it on a crop setting so you can see all the detail. As you see there, we've got quite a bit of detail there, which is quite impressive. We've got a lot of sunspots there in that region. And I must admit, very sharp image as well. But that's not the thing we need, we need to know. Like um, This is at three times modification through the camera right and we're taking a really close-up shot of the whole disc now one thing I need to check out is I'm going to check the settings I'm going to up the exposure okay and see if we get anything yet so we're at 6,000 of a second and straight away we've got no vignette so that's really good to see so we've got no vignette in so far usually get like a, a round sort of light tunnel this is just the disc I'm going to up the exposure so we're going to make it to maximize and as you can see oh wow it's worked now, because it's at three times magnification, it might crop the sensor to a smaller size. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go to exposure. We're going to set. We'll get off the digital time zoom and then 
proper confirm that actual size and as you can see all the way across we have got no vignetting whatsoever so as you can see it's worked we've got that usually you get dark patches around the sides obviously we don't and it's definitely worked so if we minimize that Yeah, as you can see there, we're good. So the actual adaption has worked massively. That is a, that's just awesome. That's really has made my day. So that is fantastic news that to see that that filter has done a marvelous job. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a crop sensor again because I want the close-up of the disc as possible so I get a decent image scale and then that's that in HD mode so we've got a nice close-up disc like always we'll lower the exposure now to 200 right and again we've got a nice crisp detail there's loads of sunspots there so we've got a sunspot there and we've got a few sunspots there so it's a lovely target so far so uh i mean even at yeah that's really good really impressive stuff so we've got a nice target there so we're going to begin our recording and uh i'll just recenter it again because i'm not quite not quite aligned up so hopefully we uh, can take an awesome shot of that see here we're just going to we're on the live view now and we're recording we're on the wide setting and I'm just going to show you so that I'm on ISO 632 6400 for a second uh, yeah ISO 6400 and we're just going to up the exposure Like you say, all the way through, we've got no halos at all, so no vignetting tunnels. We've got a nice sharp image, and we've got the image with the um, there's no tunnels, right? There's no tunnel sort of thing. We've got the whole sensor in there in the filter. So, as you can see, there it has worked. I've got slight, I don't know if it's an internal reflection at the bottom or on the right hand corner, that's probably the focus tube maybe, or internal reflection from there, but that's probably my fault because I'm not just using the continuum filter at the DSLR, I've also got a IR UV filter screwed in at my flip mirror system maybe that's causing the internal reflections that's why I'm starting to see a little bit you can just see it there a little bit on the bottom right hand corner of the draw tube there but it's not interfering what I'm trying to image there so probably it's my fault using that filter but this is this is the case like I say, I like to tell you guys the truth. If it's actually working, it's obviously is working. It's just that I've used two filters incorporated, as well as my solar filter, which is at the other end. I 
don't think I need an IR UV filter in me optical train. I just probably just need my solar filter and my barter continuum filter for this job. But so far, through the evidence there, it's worked. We're just going to dip it down to ISO 200, like so, and then exposure. Exposure down like so, yeah, and we're just going to dip it down to 2500. Okay, there you go. So, there you go. Know, there is the evidence that it's worked through the camera, and I can't argue with that. Fantastic job! So, as we can see, we've got a nice, sharp, focused sun with quite a lot of sunspots I can't tell you exactly what those sunspot regions are but there's a lot of activity there and uh, you can see with the, uh, the view here that the filter adaption you can use inch and a quarter filters with this adaption for your DSLR camera and uh, it's got to be a half crop sensor anything larger than that will not work but as you can see for this image we've got a lovely image no no vignetting whatsoever we've definitely got the distance there to the sensor so yes it is possible to use inch and a quarter and this is what I, I miss about this filter in particular I wasn't going to fork out an extra 160, 170 quid for a Barda 2 inch continuum filter. This continuum filter here it does the job perfectly. I can now utilize it for my DSLR camera and get some amazing shots of the sun. Now, the advantage of using this filter is you can get some of the graduation detail, not just the sunspots, but a lot of graduation surface detail and at the moment you can't really see it but once we stack the image you will start to see the graduation I can see it through the eyepiece I don't know if you can see it through uh, the camera itself here I can't detect any graduation but there'll be some detail there we've I saw one 200 and at an exposure of one 200 two, thousands five hundred of us uh, so with a exposure time of one two thousand five hundred of, of a second all right you can got I've got some amazing detail there there's quite a lot of detail I'm really impressed and this cropped image give me a close-up of the Sun through my 66 ED really is a fantastic view absolutely awesome but as you say, I'm not quite um, polar aligned very well, so the sun is drifting slightly, but we're still in the view. I might have to readjust the, the mount, but to be honest with you, I'm capturing that amazing detail just there. As we can see here, we've just zoomed in, and again, you can see straight away we're going to doing a close-up of those solar spot regions there. There's quite a few. There's even a few on the right-hand side. But yeah, we've got a lot of detail there. Uh, the wind's picked up a bit, so I might, I might lose a few frames there. So when I stack the image, I'm going to lose all that valuable frames. So hopefully the wind will die down a bit but we've got a nice a lot of detail there of the sunspot close-ups and I'm really happy the results there there's really is nice detail there if we yeah you know, this is what I like about this camera you can do crop sensors you can this is at 10 times here but I can zoom out like so and then I can slew across, find my other targets on, on there, 
So we've got a nice one here. And again, hit the display. Use the, the magnifying glass and you can really zoom in there. All right, there's there's another target there. There's another few sunspots. And uh, yeah, there's nice targets there. So I can see a little bit of graduation on the sides. But one thing when you up when you up the uh, magnification, you do introduce a lot of noise. So so upping the magnification is not always a good idea. But you can close in close in a lot of detail and then take some awesome sunspot images. You can use the magnification to really get your focus spot on as well by adjusting that focus to get a crisp image like that you should achieve some good results there so the magnification function on the camera does help massively but usually if I want to up the magnification I'll go around about five times but no more guys here we have it we've got the modified ST80 set up on my ioptron mount unfortunately I'm not guiding which is going to be a real challenge but as long as you are polar aligned as you can see there you are polar aligned the ST80 is connected up to my modified Canon 600D modified I have installed the Barda filter to eliminate a lot of chromatic aberration and uh, as you can see there really is an impressive little setup now as you can see we are imaging the uh, we are imaging the Andromeda galaxy so as you can see there nicely tracked we're unguided and uh, we're going to see the performance so this telescope does have its limitations but what we're going to see is if we take a closer look we're going to dim down the exposure I might have ruined the shot doing this but as you can see if we focus we're doing two minutes exposure time And there we go, we've got the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the exposure because um, I'm quite happy to sacrifice one of my images. So we're going to show you, we're going to show you so that's the last shot. I'm just going to bear with me. So there you go. So what we've got there. Come on, focus. That's not a bad image. That's not a bad image there.
Well, 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 guys and girls, what do you reckon? What a fantastic result. Don't get me wrong. Using inch and a quarter filters, as I tested through the system for the camera, you are restricted on the type of sensor you're going to use. And I'll be honest with you guys and girls, using inch and a quarter filters, using that adapter, only just fits through the Canon 600D. So as you can see through the, through the stages of the video, you can use bigger sensors, but the main problem is you will get the vignetting effect, which means you need to take flat frames to combat uh, the, um, the uh, vignetting effect, which sometimes might put people off, but you can also crop the image using Photoshop, for example, where you can cut out bits of the uh, the image itself. You can crop out some of the stacked image you have using Photoshop and you can crop it out that way. So there is alternatives. I'll be honest with you guys and girls, I did have a slight vignetting, but not much for the Canon 600D. And it really is quite impressive to see the results but apart from that, it just proves in this video that you can use that adapter and you can use your existing inch and a quarter filters. Any sensor smaller than the Canon 600D will be perfectly fine. But again, please use that astronomy tools to determine where you want the filter to be closer to that sensor. The, the closer the inch and a quarter filter to the sensor, the less chance of vignetting. So yes, it does work. I've got some amazing results. It's definitely worth buying those adapters. And you can, again, you can order it from First Light Optics. Check out the link below. All the links provided that which is shown in this video, please check them out and purchase these adapters. These are not to be underestimated. These are really are a fantastic buy. And if you're on a limited budget and you've already got inch and a quarter filters and you don't want to invest a little bit more on the two inch format filters, then go for these adapters. It's just going to, with this adaptive system, with these adapters, you can maximize, get the use out of your inch and a quarter filters. There's no need to sell them on eBay or sell them second hand. I've seen so many of these inch and a quarter filters sold second hand because some people feel that they are pointless, they're a waste of time. Um, personally, they're not. They can be used quite extensively. These adapters will help you save a bit of money. And like always, the cost of living is getting much, much worse. And to be honest with you, if you've got the equipment that you already have, maximize its use, its capabilities. And again, these adapters will allow you to do just that. And as you can see there, I've got some amazing results. But apart from that, I've got a way with using my inch and a quarter filters. I can use my solar continuum filter, which is a brilliant filter, particularly for the sunspots and the graduation surface detail. I've saved myself a good 100 quid. Because don't forget, the Debarda solar filter is not a cheap filter, and even for the inch and a quarter, that's already 70 quid there. If I was going to buy the two inch format, that's around about 100 to 120 pounds. So again, I've saved a bit of money using those adapters. And again, please check out the links below for First Light Optics for those adapters. Personally, I would recommend getting the M42 variant because that's much more of a better buy. It does, a fit. It does fit many T, uh, T adapters. The M48 is a bit big. It's a bit too thick for my liking and it doesn't fit quite well with my setup. So to be honest with you, the M42 format is much better. It's also the cheaper one. And again, it, I don't know what it is, but it fits nice. It fits nicely with uh, the some of my. It fits nicely with my setup, but again, it determines on what filters you use, 
uh, what camera sensor you use, it, it, it all depends on several factors. So please use this video, save a bit of money. Uh, thanks again, thanks for watching, and I wish you all clear skies.